Chronicle, Mr. Mick LaSalle. Mr. LaSalle's articles can be seen weekly in the pink section or daily in the date book section in the Chronicle. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to begin this evening by asking, why be a movie critic? Why inst that instead of some other aspect of the entertainment field? Uh, well, I, you become a movie critic because you don't want to work, you know. It's a, it, it's a, it's a very easy thing to be, and, and uh, you, don't even have to be, you don't have to be an expert in anything. It's not like a classical music critic or, or an art critic or something where you have to actually know what you're talking about. Um, anybody's qualified to talk about movies, so it's just, it's just a matter of how uh, entertaining you can be when you talk about movies. Uh, or yeah, really, what you are—you really are an entertainer, just as much as the people who make the movies. Only you're just a, a lower class entertainer. Uh, what first got you interested in being a movie critic? I, I was never interested in being a movie critic. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was never interested in being a movie critic at all. I, I was. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I used, I used to write columns, and, and I sometimes reviewed movies for fun uh, because I, you know, I wanted to get into movies for free. So you'd become a critic, and you get into movies for free. But uh, when I came to the Chronicle, uh, I did a, you know, I did did a bunch of different things, and, and it just so happened that I wound up doing this. I, I know it was never a, an ambition. I don't think it's something that you know, it's not, I don't think it's something that you should really have an ambition to be. I think you're better off just stumbling into it. And maybe even stumbling out of it. <laughs> I'll talk about Rain Man. Um, have you seen that? No, I didn't want to see Dustin Hoffman acting weird for uh, for two hours. I mean, I, I, you know, I. I mean, people have been trying to get me to go to this thing, but I, I just really, I just don't want to see Dustin Hoffman recite the phone book. I, you know, I'll see if it's on cable or something. And, walk out of the room and come back a few times. What yeah. movie have you reviewed recently that's been a really big disappointment to you? Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm not disappointed when they're bad or happy when they're good. You know, it's, it's just a job. I mean, I, it's, not, it's not a disappointment. Burbs was horrible, but it doesn't qualify as a disappointment. Yeah. I mean, if my car is making funny sounds, that's a disappointment. <laughs> do you think have the greatest future? Like when you go to see a movie such as, oh, let's say, Howard the Duck, I don't know if you saw that, that was considered a <laughs> box office bomb. How do you, how do you view those movies? Do you, do you, when you, when you, you say you try to go on them, what, knowing as little as much as about them, mm -hmm. but w with Howard the Duck, of course, everybody said, you know, this is going to be a great movie, it turned out to be a bomb. Oh, I see, yeah. How do you, how do you respond to that? Sometimes, well, I, I didn't review How the Duck and did that kind of thing. Sometimes really gleefully. I mean, I, I get all happy that I'm just going to tear this thing to shreds and it's going to be really fun. <laughs> I really like it. You know, it's just like, I can't believe this thing is garbage. It's supposed to be good. They spent $30 million on it and I'm going to hack it to pieces. I love it. I mean, it's, it's you know, what is life about, you know? I mean, it's the little pleasures. It's the little things. <laughs> I understand this summer a, um, a new Indiana Jones film is coming out called right. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Uh -huh. um, how do you view things like that? Now, that's supposedly going to be a big box office hit. How, what do you think is going to happen with that movie? I, I, oh, I, I don't have any idea. It'll probably be a big box office hit. But when you hear about this movie, do you just feel like going in and giving it a bad review? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, not at all. So, no. you, so the media hype doesn't affect your opinion? It doesn't whatsoever. affect me at all. No, no, not at all. It, it really doesn't. In fact, I'm not familiar with the, 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 the media hype usually happens after me. You know, I see the movie before it comes out, and I write the review, and then my review hits the paper the same time as everybody else's review. And the hype, I, I really don't, I really, I'm kind of insulated from the hype. You know, I, I don't really, I don't watch all that much TV, and, and uh, I don't read trade publications and I you know so I don't even know about the hype people know about the hype more than I do I just you know write the how many movies you've reviewed in your entire career well it's not that many because my entire career it only goes back three and a half years or so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know and I haven't been doing this for the whole time I'd say I don't know maybe maybe 200 and do you treat every movie individually um, in other words do you think the movie critics can somehow cloud their views of movies, the more movies that they see? Oh, no, 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 it has nothing to do with it. I mean, can you, does it, does it cloud your view of books to, to read more books? No, it, it doesn't. It, it, uh, 
you no, it, it just makes you a better reader. A lot of complaints about the Oscar uh, nominations. Yeah. That they nominate movies from the latter half of the year. Yeah. And a lot of excellent movies go unnoticed. Do you tend to agree with this? Well, I'll tell you, one, one movie that I thought should have been nominated in the Best Actress category was uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Married to the Mob. And uh, she, was really, she was really terrific in that. And, but not only that, she was playing in a, in a character very similar to the one that Cher played in Moonstruck. Only Cher was an abomination in, in Moonstruck. I mean, she, she, I'm from New York, and Cher would not fool anybody for two <laughs> seconds. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, on the other hand, was, was, really, was really subtle, and, and she, was, she was really good. In fact, I walked out of the movie saying, wow, I didn't know Michelle Pfeiffer was from New York, and, and I found that she was from Los Angeles. She was wonderful. But only that her acting was so good. She, I would have liked to have seen her nominated. Last year, The Last Emperor just made a sweep of the Oscars. Yeah. Do you think that that is kind of an unfair advantage for a film to have, just to go through all that and just leave all these other films unnoticed? Well, nah. No, I don't. I, I think that uh, excellence deserves to, you know, if, if it's good, it deserves to win everything. You can't start carving up things because everybody deserves a little bit. Then it, it kind of negates the purpose of awards. You know, if somebody makes the best movie, has the best acting, has the best everything, they should, they should just, uh, they should win everything. We would like to thank Mick LaSalle for coming tonight here to Concord and appearing on our show. <laughs> we look forward to reading you in the Chronicle. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah, this is fun.